how do I stay motivated during wealth creation? This is a question that I get a lot and I also have thought a lot about myself. I know that creating wealth is a journey that requires consistent motivation and dedication. I also know that there's obstacles and pitfalls that can get in the way. But how do the gurus out there continue building wealth without getting burnt out or diverted from their main objectives? Of course, they never tell you all the small little details and how they keep it going from day to day. So I decided to get some help from good old AI and see what the most popular and maybe a little unusual responses to this question were. And here's what I got. But first, this is Money Habits. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie Aldrich, and I like to talk about habits and money that can help you improve your life. If you're new to the channel and like the video, please hit the subscribe button down below and stay till the end so you can keep yourself motivated and continue to build your nest egg. So what I asked uh, chat GPT was, how do I stay motivated during wealth creation? And it said that it's a journey that requires consistent motivation and dedication. And here are some unusual tips that can help you stay motivated. So let's see what they said. The first one is the use of envy. Use the power of envy positively. Envy is often seen as a negative emotion, but if harnessed correctly, it can be a powerful motivator. Follow successful people in your field and let their success drive you to work harder. Turn envy into admiration and inspiration. Have you done that before? Uh, I know that you know, I'm not the sharpest tack in the box, right? So if you ask me, you know, we play Trivial Pursuit or something, I may not win at that, right? But I know that I've done a lot in my life that, you know, maybe the, the normal average Joe hasn't done, right? Or average Jane. Uh, and I see how other people are wealthier than I or in better shape or you know have a better relationship with their spouse or whatever and what it does is it helps motivate me saying hey if those people can do it and they can lead the lives that they want they want you know they they're leading financial uh, freedom they can spend the time during their day the way that they want without having to you know do the nine to five grind all the time why can't I it kind of puts a fire under me and definitely uh, gives me inspiration so you can use the power of envy positively to help you build wealth so I definitely like that the Next one is create a public accountability pact. It says, uh, announce your financial goals publicly on social media. This public commitment can create a sense of accountability and pressure to succeed. Talk about peer pressure. The fear of public failure can be a powerful motivator. So an easy thing to do is, you know, go on social media and say, hey, Here's my goal, gonna lose 10 pounds. Hey, here's my goal, starting a new business, come help support me. Hey, just like I'm doing now, Money Habits, YouTube channel, let's go. Uh, you know, put yourself out there. It helps you to learn faster, to fail faster, and to actually do what you're saying that you wanna do. You know, we dream a lot, we have thoughts, we have ambition, but sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. Sometimes our doubts, our fears can stifle that ambition and put out the fire that's been, you know, burning down deep for so long. And if you make a public decree, people are going to hold it to you. Somebody out there is listening. Somebody out there is inspired by what you're trying to do. And if they see you succeed, it can help them succeed too. So put yourself out there. 
what do you have to lose, right? You might actually do what you say you're going to do. You might actually succeed. You might actually get wealthy. So put yourself out there. Get an accountability partner. One person, that's all you need to light that fire and keep it burning bright. Okay, let's see. I like that one. The next one is embrace fear of failure. Instead of trying to eliminate fear, embrace it. The fear of failure can push you to prepare better, work harder, and remain focused. Use fear as a tool to keep you on your toes and prevent complacency. I like that. Uh, I know that when I was a lot younger, I was always scared to, you know, do the wrong thing, to fail, to, you know, I, I think I feared that people would think that I was stupid or incapable or incompetent or, you know, just I, I didn't belong, right? Um, you know, being a dentist, I was the first one to do any of that uh, in my family. The, the first one to go on to grad school to become, you know, a, a, a doctor, um, you know, a professional uh most of my family some of them went to college but most of them didn't a lot of them did own their own businesses but i kind of combined all of it and i know that i was always fearful of oh my gosh what if this didn't turn out what if you know i, I don't make any money in my practice and you know it was just a a, a big hoopla in my own head and Failure is nothing but a lesson. That's what they say anyway. Um, I know that you do have to fail. You do have to uh, climb your way. And especially when you're trying to build your nest egg, there's a lot of skill sets that you have to learn. You need to have financial education. You need to learn where you're going to invest your money and then you need to know how to actually do it. Are you going the real estate route? Are you doing a business? Are you investing in, you know, stocks and bonds, dividend paying stocks, private equity and credit? Are you doing gold and silver? Are you doing, you know, what exactly are you doing? That takes a lot of time, effort and energy to, you know, learn those skills and how to actually build your nest egg. And yes, you will lose money. Yes, you will think that, you know, a business idea is going to work out and then it doesn't. So don't be fearful of learning new things, of trying things, because in the end, you are going to be so much more better um, than what you were in the beginning. And don't let fear stop you from trying new things. So I like that. Embrace fear of failure. The next one is visualize worst case scenarios. Regularly spend time imagining the worst case scenario if you fail to achieve your financial goal. This can create a sense of urgency and drive you to take action to avoid these negative outcomes. So how I like to think about this is, you know, if I want to spend, you know, 25 grand on a European vacation, well, what's the worst thing that can happen if I spend that 25 grand? Well, the worst case that, worst thing that can happen is I don't have that money to invest in my financial freedom. Because right now, that is my priority. That is what I am, you know, working so hard for, making these videos, monetizing, uh, you know, saving as much money as possible from my income so that I can do uh, what I want to do with my days, right? And if I spend that on that European vacation, then I don't have that money to invest and multiply so that I can live off the dividends. So you have to prioritize where you want your money, what your goals are, and how you're going to spend it. And I think if you see, well, the lost opportunity cost, if I spend it here, I can't spend it there. I can't spend it on myself and my future self if I spend it now on this certain thing. So I really like that. You got to visualize what that worst case scenario is, um, you know, if you lose that money. What does it mean to your future? 
So that definitely uh, is something to think about. The next one I really like, uh, reward yourself extravagantly. I think extravagantly is probably a bit much, but each milestone, especially in your financial journey, each milestone that you hit, you pay off your car. Yoo-hoo, maybe you deserve to spend something, you know, hey, treat myself to um, a nice lunch or treat myself to a new pair of boots or, you know, whatever it is. Do something small. I think extravagantly, that might be, you know, an overly exertant kind of word uh, that can end up sabotaging your progress. But I do think that you need to reward yourself. You need to celebrate along the way because that also helps to create uh, emotion and motivation for you to keep excited about, you know, continuing with your journey. So, um, you know, building wealth, especially in your 20s and 30s, you know, you get into the messy middle and you start having a family and everything is tugging at your wallet. You need to continue to celebrate the small victories along the way. You pay off the car, you pay off your credit card, you know, whatever it is, celebrate a little bit along the way so then you can keep making more uh, decisions and striving for more goals and accomplishing them so that you know that you're seeing the big picture, right? And you're enjoying the journey along the way because you're celebrating at each step as you make that step. Uh, Let's see set extravagant of rewards let's take extravagant out there i think that's a little too much for achieving certain milestones the promise of a luxurious vacation how about just a nice vacation how about just a fun vacation maybe a kid vacation or an expensive gadget how about just a gadget right can keep you motivated this contrasts with the typical vice of being frugal during wealth creation i think there is room for frugality and intentional spending uh, when you are building your wealth. But, like I said, you gotta enjoy yourself along the way and definitely uh, celebrate each milestone. The next one is gamify your financial goals. Gamify it. Um, Turn your wealth creation journey into a game. Use apps or create a system where you earn points for hitting financial targets and milestones. Competing against yourself or others can make the process fun and engaging. So this might tie into your accountability partner that we talked about earlier. You can kind of say, hey, uh, we both have about the same amount of credit card debt. Let's see who can uh, pay it off earlier. And then the other one has to treat the other one to, uh, um, you know, dinner or drinks or, you know, whatever, a massage or something. Um, So I like gamifying things. When I was paying off, when my husband and I were paying off our house, um, I downloaded a little sheet of paper from Dave Ramsey and it had a picture of a house and then it had bricks for each payment. And they had so many bricks. So what I did was I went through and said, okay, I need to pay this much, you know, extra a month in order to, you know, pay that off. And at the time, my son was younger and he was still coloring. So we made the correct amount of bricks in that house. And every time I made an extra payment, we went ahead and colored it a different color and I let him do it. And then we put it on the refrigerator so we could see his artwork, right? And we could also remind me and my husband of what our goals were and how we were, you know, progressing. So, you know, create yourself a little graphic, something that you can put on your, uh, you know, your in your bedroom, on your mirror in the bathroom, on your refrigerator, something that you can uh, remind yourself of why you're working so hard, of why you are, um, you know, working towards these certain milestones so that, you know, you can celebrate those wins and create the financial security that you want to do. So I like gamifying. That's pretty cool. The next one is adopt a scarcity mindset, but only temporary. 
temporarily. This is a, a key thing. I never ever want you to have a scarcity uh, mindset when it comes to money because there are trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars out there and all we need is a little bit. There's plenty for all of us. It's just for right now, we want to uh, create an urgency, create a an ambitious goal that we can strive to, right? So while an abundance mindset is important, occasionally adopting a scarcity mindset can remind you of the importance of every dollar. This can motivate you to be more disciplined and careful with your spending. So in other words, you got to be more intentional. So I don't like scarcity as a word. I try not to use that in my own vocabulary. However, I think intentionality is a, a better word. And I, I think you have to have that no matter what. Until you're financially free, you've hit FI, you're retired, or you're, you're doing a, a job or a career that you know, you're not necessarily worried and, and money motivated about, uh, that's when you can you know, do whatever you want to do. But until then, you need to be intentional with your money, making it work for you, right? The next one is surround yourself with naysayers. I love this. So keep a few naysayers around you who doubt your ability to succeed. Their skepticism can fuel your determination to prove them wrong and achieve your goals. So I have a couple of these in my life and uh, I don't really let it sink in, but what it does is it definitely helps motivate me to kind of say, Hey, baby, I can do this. I can show you up. I am going to retire in, you know, five years. I am going to do this. I am going to hit these goals. Uh, oh, you've never written anything. Uh, I'm on my 10th book now, which stay tuned because it's coming for you guys to, it's all about you guys on this channel. Um, but yeah, I'm an author. Uh, I do YouTube videos. I do all kinds of things that most people don't do or aren't willing to try and um, it definitely gives me fuel and motivation and even for my money goals uh i i hit 51 this year i know i mean it's it's flying by and that definitely motivates me to um you know look around at my peers and say you know what uh these guys are bitching and complaining and moaning and groaning about the nine to five you know, grind and they don't have any money. They haven't saved enough. Generation X is, is toast because we haven't been putting away enough money. And I say to myself, too bad naysayers because I am going to hit my financial goals and be financially free very, very soon and sooner than most people in my generation. So let's see. The next one is, uh, went up too far. Sorry. Practical, uh, practice radical transparency. Share your financial journey, including your failures and setbacks with a trusted group. Radical transparency can create a support network that keeps you accountable and motivated. So again, that's accountability. If you declare it on social media, you gotta keep following up, good or bad, right? Because people will connect with you uh, if you're being transparent, if you're sharing your, your, your fears, your, um, milestones, you know, your celebrations, uh, they're going to celebrate with you. And they're also going to help motivate you if you fail or fall off that you can do it. So you can gain strength and some wisdom along the way. If you're transparent with people, just be real, right? I try to be real on this channel telling you of my failures if you want to know um you know my financial journey um i'll put the link to my financial journey video uh and tell you all the mistakes that i made and what i did to correct them i'll put that in the link uh in the description so check that out but um the more transparent you are the more they're going to relate to you right so you know be honest about stuff we're all here to help each other and learn from what other people do. 
The next one is visualize a legacy of wealth. Imagine the legacy you want to leave behind. Visualizing how your wealth can impact future generations and your community can be a powerful motivator to keep pushing forward. So do you want to leave your kids anything? Knowledge, wealth, anything like that. Do you want to help them with college? I know my parents helped me a little bit with college, but most of it was me on my dime. And I know that I want to be able to help provide a college education for my son so that when he gets out and starts his new life, starts his new career, that he's not bombarded with student loan debt. I mean, that is the worst feeling is you're just starting in life and you've just got all that debt weighing on your shoulders. And I definitely don't want to do that. I know also that you know, once I pass and move on to whatever the next journey is, that I will have his family um, and him set that they will have a little bit of a nest egg that will help secure their future when I'm not around. So what about you? Do, you? do you want to help your kids go to college? Maybe help them, you know, buy their first house or house hack or, you know, investment, whatever. Um, you know, visualizing a, a legacy definitely is something that motivates me to try to do better, to try to put more money away, to try to build and grow my wealth so that when I'm done using it, you know, you can't take it with you, that, you know, I can leave something for my family. It says, by incorporating these controversial and usual tips, your video can stand out and attract a wider audience potentially making it go viral. So, um, you know, I want to make videos that I know are, you know, popular subjects so that uh, when you're looking up something that you're going to actually learn what you need to learn because YouTube is all about how to. So how to get wealthy, how to stay wealthy, create the legacy, and in this video, how to keep motivated. So I hope it helped you. Um, and uh, I hope that you did learn something. So that's it for the show today. Um, what lessons have you uh, decided to incorporate to help motivate you for continuing your wealth journey? I'd like to know. Try, try to leave me a comment uh, down below. And uh, until next video, until next time, this is Money Habits.